Time's up. Let's do this. We're in for a wild night. <laughs> Welcome, 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 everyone, to episode 210 of Born to be Wild, a wild and wild adjacent Hearthstone podcast where we have fun hanging out with friends, talking about the wild and wild adjacent formats of Hearthstone and spotlighting members of the wild and wild adjacent communities. <laughs> I'm your host, Electric Sheep City. It is great to be back on this beautiful Friday evening here in Kickin' Rad, Colorado. I am joined by fellow host, Schmoopy Daddy! Yeah, back and happy to be contributed to the pod, uh, feeling very perilous in paradise. <laughs> so for those of you joining us for the first time, welcome aboard. We record this podcast live every Friday evening at twitch.tv slash born to be wild HS. And the video version of this podcast is posted to YouTube shortly thereafter. Audio versions are also distributed to all the podcast apps. So however you are watching, listening, or absorbing via osmosis this podcast today, thank you. Yes. You. Shumi Daddy, content plug. Before we get into the main topic of the show tonight, I'd like to say thank you to the patrons of our show. Your support means the world to us. If you enjoy this content, please like, subscribe, and comment on this video on YouTube. Another simple way to support the show is to leave a review on your podcast platform of choice. If you're watching live on Twitch, we've got some awesome emotes that you can unlock by just subscribing to the channel. This is free using Amazon Prime. Finally, if you'd like to show to, if you'd like to support the show financially you can join our patreon for as little as one dollar per month we have some channels in discord that are unlocked by subscribing to the patreon where you can see the show coming together each week check it out if you'd like to interact with us personally please join our discord a free and amazing online community of friends from all across the world who love talking about wild hearthstone links to all this stuff and more included including our merch can be found on our website which is www.bornbewildhs dot com sheep how was your week yeah my week was um pretty pretty dang good um starting off with uh, the 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 down note and then it'll get better from there um my glasses were broken before last week's show um which i was subsequently not on um on wednesday tuesday monday i don't know or earlier on in the week um, and my old glasses are an old prescription. And uh, by the end of pretty much most days, it's like, okay, I've got this like splitting headache. Yeah, that's not been fun. But I found my contacts um, in, in a box, which was inside and not outside. So it's not like they had been cooked and all that good stuff. Um, not in the garage or anything either. So um you know, my new glasses with the new prescription should be here by the end of next week. But until then, I'm not like, you know, having a, a splitting headache by the end of the, the day. So that's, that's like benefit. I said, yeah, starting off the, with the down, but, but, you know, it could definitely be worse. Blizzard Entertainment invited us to participate in the Theorycraft stream on Wednesday. And that was a blast. So much fun slinging cards with my buddies here. So I had, had so much fun doing that thing. Um, and we'll, we'll go into a, a little bit more about the theory craft stuff and the cards that we think are going to have a little bit more of an impact, which that, that list changed after the theory craft stream, uh, concierge in particular, Whoa. <laughs> I did not see that coming before yeah. then. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, I, that seemed to be all over the place by the time we were done as like people were agreeing one of these standout cards um, in the set so far. Mm hmm. And finally, well, I, I think this happened uh, it, kind of splitting the difference here. So uh, before Theorycraft stream, uh, I had hit Legend and Standard. And after the Theorycraft stream, I think yesterday, 
that would make sense because today's Friday. So yesterday I, I hit Legend in Wild as well. Still working on Twist, not exactly sure what to play. I'm, I'm at like D5. I feel like I win like three, lose two, win two, lose three, like just kind of like back and forth. Um, so not really sure what to play to try and like climb in earnest there. But uh, yeah, hit Legend Poor and earnest. Standard in Wild. Poor Whenever somebody earnest. says in earnest, for earnest. <laughs> so that was the week here in the city of electric sheep. Schmoopy daddy, how has your week been, friend? Uh, it's been summer. Like, I just, you know, it's like you wake up, you get, you get, you, Schmoopy mommy and I have been like swapping off who is going to be the person to wake up with the children. And so mm -hmm. Schmoopy wakes himself up at 5.45 every day. And is mostly self-sufficient. Like he comes in and wakes us up once or twice, which is annoying, but we have to train him not to do that where it's just like, okay, here's the appropriate things you can eat in the morning. If you're mm -hmm. hungry, here's the not appropriate things. Don't come in and ask me for Cheetos first thing in the morning. Number one, we haven't had Cheetos for a week. Okay. Number two, Cheetos are not a breakfast food. You need to eat breakfast food. You can eat crap breakfast food but you need to eat breakfast food but he's usually pretty good he wakes up and he eats like a yogurt out of the fridge and um and you know he might get himself like a breakfast bar or something like that and then he sits down and he watches dragon riders or bluey or or something like that and you know he's pretty much like king in the house until one of us gets up at like 6 37 so like he's like he's living the good life pretty much and we get to sleep in until 6 30 or 7 and then one of us gets to sleep a little bit later and that's pretty good and then it's like all right get him to camp and uh and then we get him to camp and then it's basically like all right who's working out first and <laughs> you know daughter's good she'll come down with us uh, we'll bring her Kindle. She'll sit in a little lawn chair that we have set up with some tables. And, like, it's also by the pantry. So if she sees something weird in the pantry, she wants to eat. Well, she'll ask for it, like beans. So we'll feed her beans in her chair, like, downstairs in the basement while one of us does the trail mill for 35 minutes. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. So it's been it's been summer on that front. Like, not, not to get into gory detail, but, like, the schmoopy daddy summer is pretty good. Um... A personal note, I've been trying to do like um, fasting 16 hours uh, and then eating in a window of eight hours. And I think that's been good. Uh, just like sort of localizing that. I've, I've seen an improvement in my weight. I know I'm just like, you know, I got a knee injury playing in my alumni game because I was way too heavy. And so like sort of like using that as a wake up call and getting back into shape a little bit and using the time that I have now to do it, that's a good place for it. Um Aside from that, Hearthstone wise, three Theory Craft stream, it was it was interesting to play with the new cards. Um, it was inter interesting to see uh, how it's playing out, uh, especially the aftermath. People are starting to call it Skullmance 2.0, which like a lot of people are using that as a swear word, and I I kind of see that as a positive. So like it's like mm -hmm. okay, it sounds like it's going to be interesting, guys. Um, so we, we can talk a little bit more about that and how that impacts the wild meta. And other than that, um, as far as just like playing Hearthstone, I've mostly been an arena main off stream, um, just playing with the new cards, trying to figure out what's good, be getting BM'd by Chinese players who have conceded 40,000 times to get good lineups so that they, they dumpster <laughs> me. No, it's been good. It's been good. Um, had a good run though. I had, I did have an eight win run with like a mixture of DK and Warlock that was super smarky, and that's that seemed all right. Um, but other than that, that's my week. What do we got news wise? Welcome to the news. The news is so good. So to start off the news, we had patch notes for thirty point oh three zero point oh. That's right. Hearthstone has hit the 30 mark, not year, but patch. Um, so first they announced that Theory Crafting was going to be Wednesday. Now that's in the past, but this was, I think, Monday, Tuesday, Monday. Um, so this was in the future from, from the notes. Uh, so boy, howdy, are we going to talk about the Theory Crafting stream in a bit? Um, also... They note that the Community Days uh, um, is starting, well, today from time of recording. So Friday, 
the 19th. And um, so, you know, free packs we, if you're watching are we here. Are dropping right now? We are dropping, say, are we dropping right now. Yeah. Got drops on? Drops oh, activated. <laughs> so, of course, you can get some free packs from watching some Hearthstone on that there twitch.television uh, right now, particularly slash Born to be Wild HS. Hey, <laughs> if you're listening to this on the replay, um, it, you know, you probably don't go to Born to be Wild HS, but search Hearthstone on, on uh, Twitch and maybe you'll get some free drops depending on when you're listening very cool stuff there as well one thing that i thought was really cool is that um some of the creators decks are being featured in the client as deck recipes so the, the yeah. people who are being featured are the ones who they had um do the like gameplay videos so that's like the housewife uh, language hacker um John Bray and Baby Bear and um Day 9 and Raren. Um so each of them have um I think two, three. There are 11 classes so it's not completely even. But each of them have have a, a couple of um deck recipes in the game which I think is really cool. Yeah, and I think a a criticism of the like the sort of pre-made decks in the past has been like, well, there's a certain amount of just like plug in senselessly sort of towards the deck lists where it's just like, well, this inclusion is weird. Why doesn't this get included? And like I think famously in a twist deck that they were selling, there was like um What's the pirate that splits uh, choose one cards? Sheep, I know you're going to know this one because it's an aggro druid card. Oh, the, the um, Jerry Rig Carpenter? Yeah, there's like a Jerry Rig Carpenter included and no choose one cards included whatsoever in the pre-built, car in, in the pre-built deck. Uh -huh. And like that's an, that's an easy oversight if you're just sort of quickly slapping the deck together and like just like, all right, well, I have to get this done. This seems functional. Let's, let's go. But then if you actually like sit down to play the deck, you say, oh oops so it's nice that they had like content creators focused and with their expertise like actually building stuff I'm, i don't know what restrictions or guidelines they gave them but like they they were focused on building this one deck and you assume that they put the effort in the playtesting into this one deck so that was that was good i think that's a big positive and i think that 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 adds a little bit more veracity to the decks and a little bit more um a little bit more weight to them yeah, and I love that we actually got to see them in action before they even hit the client, too. Um, you know, the housewife is in chat right now. Hi, wifey. Um, we were just talking about your decks in the client. That's We think that is kicking rad, and, and we're just saying 100%. those praises as well. So really excited to see that. Um, there have been a couple of changes to cards as well um sure so the first is splish splash whelp it was nerfed and is now a three mana three two instead of a two mana one one same effect it's now nerfed wild growth <laughs> cool um yeah i i and I, like i think as a wild card i think we still play it like yeah. I, 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 in a in a dragon specific deck, I don't think you mind the three mana. If anything, it like solves some awkward hands where like you've got um was it Breath of Dreams? You've already got Breath mm -hmm. of Dreams in your hand, and you also have Splish Splash. So now you know you you play Breath of Dreams first, and then you play the Splish Splash, or you play Wild Growth first, and then you play the Splish Splash. And what's nice is now it's a little bit more aggressive. Like, I still think it's a good card in Wild. I've, I've seen the opinion all over the place as far as this card goes, as far as like, oh, nope, we cut it. Oh, nope, it's still good. Oh, nope, uh, I'm indifferent. Like, I, I think it's still okay. Yeah, I'm 100% in agreement with you there. I think, honestly, now the body is actually a body. You know, three yeah. mana, three, two is still definitely understated, but a two mana, one, one was way understated. So, yeah great effect with the ramp and now the body's actually like relevant not not strong but relevant yeah <laughs> i mean you kind of take plus one mana stapled to a blood friend raptor like i know it is conditional on having a dragon in hand but still like 
still kind of all right. So, yeah, something that will probably not affect us in wild whatsoever. Uh, or next, standard. <laughs> or, standard, <yeah. laughs> or anyone, <laughs> demolition renovator is in core now. If you okay. don't remember what that one is, it, it's yeah, don't blame you. It, it destroys a location. <laughs> I, I can't even remember the stats on it. It was understated and overcosted. Uh, I think it was a four mana three three in the past with tradable, and now it's a three mana three three. Looking at the notes, yeah, it is a three mana three three tradable yeah. battle cry destroy an enemy location. So you know, three mana three three Great. destroy a location. I okay. Don't think anyone's playing this, so we're not going to talk about it a whole lot longer. <laughs> Locations are coming back in. I get why they're doing that thing. It's core. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there is a new in-game event coming oh. around the tavern that is called Perils in Paradise. Um so that's coming up on July 30th through August 20th. Get some Perils in Paradise packs and a, um, uh, what did they call it? Uh, ice cream side Death Knight hero skin. And just to make sure, like the graphic showed um, the previous expansions packs, but it will be per Perils in Paradise packs confirmed. Absolutely. The pedantics confirmed. out there just it's fine it's fine <laughs> they know they push the graphic out but they know i think it's probably like a coding thing like they probably made the event and it's like coded to whatever the current expansions packs will be but they'll be there it's okay yeah it'll be the new expansion packs there not mm -hmm. whiz bangs free packs free hero portrait what's not to love yeah 100 percent now, the reason why Shmoopy Daddy has been playing some arena off stream mm -hmm. is that there has also been an arena update. And Shmoopy, I'm going to kick it over to you because you've been engaging with this oh. quite a bit more. Um, oh, God. Oh, ooh. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll give a... the basic primer while, while you, you get your, your bearings. Um, <laughs> I so, can read it. It's fine. Okay, I'll kick it over your way. <laughs> sure, it's it's a dual class arena. Class cards will appear about twice as often as before. The new card pool is the core set, Festival of Legends, tit Titans, Showdown in the Badlands, Whizbang's Workshop, and Perils in Paradise. Um, it's always kind of like goofy to figure out uh, when it's a dual class when it's a dual class arena, it like doubles the amount of time I feel like it takes people to figure out what the good stuff is. Because again, you're kind of mm -hmm. chopping and changing and figuring out where the good cards are. I will say that a lot of the good cards in the previous meta are still good here. Like specifically, I was watching Ron Mexico um, before I hopped on. Uh, he's, he's streaming right about now. He's streaming Arena, even though he's a, a standard streamer. But, like, you know, end of the expansion, standard meta's feeling kind of stale, trying something a little bit new. And so he was streaming some Arena. And um, he had a couple sunset volleys in his, like, mage demon hunter list. And, like, immediately I know, like, okay, sunset volley is one of those busted Arena cards. So uh, some classes are in better shape than others going into this as far as like their clan their their busted cards are still legal uh, i will say that the the uh perils in paradise cards when they've shown up have performed very very well from what i've seen in arena um nice. a couple have really stood out to me i think before i even did the theory crafting stream concierge looked ex looked excellent in arena uh, especially because you're doing dual class so half the cards that you're playing like don't in theory do not belong to your portrait so you're actually getting a benefit from concierge there and i thought well i mean that's that's a little bit niche and maybe that's like you know just strictly to arena because it happens to be how you're drafting but i think we saw more in the theory crafting more and more like oh no actually this could <laughs> have a greater benefit than that um but uh, I, my best run was was with a combination of DK and Warlock. If I look on HS Replay, those are like DK is very good, but Warlock is Terra bad. So I maybe I was just 
high rolled out of my mind. Uh, Mage looks strong right now. Um, from memory, I feel like Druid's okay. Rogue is okay. I feel like Rogue is always kind of like a little worse in stats than it is in practicality because it has so much scam in the current cards that if you kind of trust the kind of like let's generate resources cards, that that's kind of nasty. And, and if you pair it with Mage, who can get one of the best legendaries that you have in Cadgar and his idiot ball, <laughs> um, then you, you can usually do okay. Yeah, I asked I asked Save File. Like I, we raid Save File frequently after this stream because he's one of the mm -hmm. few guys who's like kind of doing something wild adjacent. And um, he's in Arena Main and he's been doing it forever. And 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 he's a very talented player. And I asked him, all right, well, what's what's like? It's been it's been four hours since the new cards dropped in Arena. What's the meta? As a joke. And he's like, well, I think pretty much saying this before, just draft Cadgar and go. Uh, so like you know, that's always an <laughs> option. That's always an option, which is like shocking to me because I swear that ball is just plumb stupid when I play him. But uh, that's arena. It's okay. I don't mind throwing my goal. I, keep in mind, like when I play arena, I want to get three wins. If I get three wins, I'm at least getting 90% uh, of the time 150 gold value for my run. And then after that, it's gravy for me. So like the yeah. eight win run I got with that like death death knight warlock run was like omega extra like that's extra value for me i think if you're at least getting three wins or four wins you're coming out on top in arena which is why yeah. it's a good place to uh, build your collection yeah one other really impactful thing um that will <laughs> I, I think have a really big impact for arena is that class cards will now appear about twice as often as before uh, rather than playing with neutral piles now you get to to choose from a whole lot more class cards doesn't mean that you're always going to pick the class cards maybe you get offered concierge and obviously you're going to take that instead right um but class cards especially for some of the the older sets i say older and, and this one like festival of legends um tends to synergize a little bit more it tends to be a little bit more just kind of inherently strong than the neutral ones, which which need to be a little bit more situational to be as strong, typically. Yeah, I think, like, I remember Festival Legends looking at the neutral set being like, that's a busted arena card. That's a busted arena card. Oh, that's really? a busted <laughs> arena card. And, like, kind of being like, okay, that's... These are all kind of, like, strong standalone neutrals. And I don't think that slowed down in Titans. I know it didn't slow down in, in Showdown in the Badlands. Whizbang's Workshop had a ton of good, like the all the origami cards are like flat so busted good. in Arena. Like, oh yeah, let me just flip your minion's best attack onto a Frog that can now like rush into another like gigantic minion that you have. Let me just completely flip the game on its head for five mana. So like I know Whizbang's Workshop, the neutrals were really good, and like following in the same vein, the Perils and Paradise neutrals mm -hmm. look very very solid so like arena's been um not the low powered sort of wet noodle slap fest that i kind of thought it used to be i'm not going to call it duels but uh right. it's it's trading more it's trending more that way than it is um like the old the old like slow trudge fest that the old arena used to be love to see it well, and finally for Patch Notes 30.0, Hearthstone Music of the Tavern, Volume 1, is now in places that most music can be found. It's not on Amazon Music, so don't request it Ooh. in a Schmoopy Daddy stream. You won't be able to see them there, but they are Daddy on... Daddy Bezos uh, does not agree. No. <laughs> so <laughs> they're on um, Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes, YouTube, and Deezer. I don't know cool. what Deezer is, but don't it's on either. all of the other places. I'm not hip enough. No, I guess not. <sighs> but not on Amazon Music. I made that mistake once. Shmoopy was looking for it. And he's like, I, I don't think this is what you wanted, but here it is. And I was like, no, this is not what, what is this? No, it wasn't at all. It was something else the artist had done, which was nothing related to Hearthstone. <laughs> no, it, it sounded completely different. And it was like, uh, what? What is this? 
I was asking for Hearthstone music. That's what was happening. <laughs> That's not what I got. <laughs> <laughs> this is in Hearthstone music. Oh, yeah. This is, uh, yeah. Nah. Anyway, I'm going to play this card. <laughs> <laughs> well, otherwise in the news, the uh, tavern fra the reward track rather, uh, refresh has been officially announced. So, of course, as usual, there are kind of two tracks to the reward track um, for Perils in Paradise. Um, the show notes, or show notes, the um, uh, blog post goes into a you know whole breakdown. You can see exactly what all's there. But the high points are um, that the free track has things like packs uh, from Perils in Paradise, a random epic card, two random legendary cards, some tavern tickets, a new card back, of course, gold. Um, there are also 14 golden cards, as well as Gorgon, Zor Gorgon Zormu. Uh, Very that good card, card, by the way. Yeah. Very good card, by the way. Possibly Absolutely. could see play in like... I, it's not on our list tonight talking about Wild Impact because I had kind of forgotten it, um, but it would not shock me if it made its way into Reno Piles in Wild as just like solid like fine card to play as a three man at three three and then later you drop a two mana cheese for a stupid value yeah that felt like a very good card it did and it's free and for free <laughs> and awesome. also of course for finishing the rewards track you get to choose from one of now they're up to 21 hero skin options that's a ton it's a ton to choose from <laughs> i might be at it Am I out of them yet? I can't possibly be out of them, right? No, not not from the the free track yet because okay, the, not from the free track. Yeah, it's the tavern regular. I think that you may be out of. Like I'm, I'm, I'm maxed I, out of the tavern re regular for sure. Yeah, I, I'm getting close there. I'm not, I'm not quite there yet, but I'm getting close there. And that's one that you get to choose um, every two hundred for the the uninitiated. Um, of course, I said that that was the free track. The paid track also has a whole lot of stuff and things. Um, so again, the blog post uh, has absolutely everything listed. Uh, the high points are there's an experience boost, as usual. Uh, AFK Diamond Legendary card. I don't think I saw anybody play AFK, if I recall correctly. People are... So it's so funny. I see two camps with the AFK Diamond Legendary card. Uh -huh. I see people that are super not happy that AFK is the Diamond Legendary card because they think <laughs> she's useless. Absolutely useless. And they'd never play her. And they're so disappointed. And they're mad. <laughs> the, other camp, the other camp is like, this is the best diamond legendary animation we've ever seen and so like this has to have been made based off of um i'm gonna guess artistic merits and not mm -hmm. necessarily competitive merits and that has people really really mad like we have somebody we have we have um adiyogi in chat mentioning like listen she got the diamond treatment last expansion geppetto got the diamond treatment people were not happy geppetto got the diamond treatment because it was like kind of a niche card mm -hmm. um so like I, this has caused some controversy in the community i guess because this these are the things we have to worry about <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I can't care. I can't find myself caring enough to get up in arms about this. I think it was made on artistic merits and like the goodwill was there, but like people want to play it, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I, I doubt we'll see her played a whole lot, but you know, in one of the anima, ana, um, animated things somewhere it, it, that was official, like, it showed AFK having a different effect, and that was plus three, plus three instead of plus two, plus two. So theoretically, at some point, she's was nerfed before like actually coming out. Yeah. So, and she so was she that yeah. good? Like, are are we going to be wrong about that? Maybe. Well, she's, I don't know. If she's not, they'll they'll buff her up. 
Like it wouldn't shock me. Like people are mad enough about it that like they might just buff the card. So that people are like, I don't feel bad about playing my new lot diamond legendary that I paid for. So maybe like, so. Okay, that's fine. She'd be great in an egg deck. We yeah, were playing egg decks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know that was that was a really fun one too. Well, that we'll get there good. shortly. That was a really uh -huh. fun deck too. <laughs> um, also on the paid track, uh, golden legendary cards for Marin the Manager and Gorgon Zormu. Um, good value. Great value there. Um, two Seaside Giant Golden Epic Cards, two Mixologist Signature Epic Cards. That's one that we're going to be talking about later because that's going to gonna have mix. some wild yeah. impact. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> uh huh. Two uh, Hydration Station Signature Rare Cards, two Tide Pool Pupil Signature Common Cards. Oh man, Cosm that card! That card might break wild in half. I don't think I put that on my list because I forgore it's so broken. That's that card is actually a problem. I, I'm really bad at connecting the name with the the card until until they kind of like seep into my brain via osmosis. Uh, which one is Typo Pupil again? It's the tiny little one drop Naga that you play three spells and then oh. it remembers one. And yeah. And there's you get, to, a, you get to discover it, right? Yeah, you discover the spell that one of the one of the three spells that it remembers you get to discover one of them and that's actually probably factually going to be a problem in wild and might be a problem in standard so that's one to sort of tack onto our list as well because i have more to i have more to talk about on that one that's one of those cards that like i've been watching um Spurgs, the guy who came up with Mine Rogue, I've been mm -hmm. watching him wax poetic about this card in particular. And uh, when Spurgs is talking highly about a card, uh, pay attention because he's about to commit a war crime. So, like that's <laughs> that's something can to to, uh, to to take into account. So, also on the track are a cosmetic coin and a card back. Um, the cosmetic coin for that one is the one that looks like a sand dollar. I really like both the cosmetic coins in this one. So the, the one on this one is the one that looks like a sand dollar. And then the one that you get for like having however many cards from, from the, the set is the one that looks like a um, pirate coin. Like both of those look either. really cool. They both sound cool. I'll add them to my rotation. I love that we have a rotating coin now. I can show off all my coins. Yeah. I have both of them put on the screen right now for video enjoyers. Um, oh, so yeah. yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool, right? I I really like both of these. Also, we've got a vacation themed hero skin for each class, and to round it out, we've got two golden standard packs. Yeah, good value. I I I don't spend a lot of money on the game anymore. I buy the battle pass. Because I think the experience boost pays for itself in gold if you play enough. I'm probably going to end this expansion somewhere at like, if I were to guess, close to like 370 on the mm -hmm. on the track. I didn't, I you know, there are some days I took off. I didn't go 100% on achievements. I didn't super, super, super push myself to grind out every single level. But they did boost the amount of experience that you get from quests after a lot of <laughs> community feedback. <laughs> and play testing and uh and so like i think it's getting easier to fill out the tracks if you play regularly and so like i think it's worth it to buy that and the other thing i buy are the uh bundles they've been making available at the end of the expansions for how well you do on the standard level la ladder so you'll get like i don't know these bundles for like let's buy 15 packs for seven bucks that mm -hmm. for somebody who's got a full collection already a full standard collection the standard packs are just packs for the new set <laughs> so here's like, a new set cheaper <laughs> yeah so like I, it's worth it for me to go in on those so like if you if you're looking to spend a little bit and improve your collection but not break the bank i think for for sure the battle pass gets you uh, ignoring the cosmetics just the fact that it's getting you epics and stuff that you don't have to craft that you can re-roll it just it fills out your collection much cleaner while also giving you decent value. And again, if you're playing regularly, you can really capitalize on the XP boost, which is really the, the, the part that gets you the most, the most value for me. 
And then, of course, you said even ignoring the cosmetics. On top of that, with the cosmetics, we've also oh, yeah. got a whole lot of things. Like the, there are two coins that we're getting with this expansion in total. One is for having pretty much all the cards. The other we just get as part of the battle pass. Like <laughs> that's how cool. um, I'm not going to say rare, but you know how highly the the coin is valued in the in game currency type situation. Um, so I mean, I think that that's in and of itself a great value as well um if you value cosmetics which i do so i think that's yeah. always a, a, a something to keep as part of the equation as well so that kind of concludes the the news portion of this um the shindig uh we've got kind of two parts i think of our discussion topic um so of course the one that is kind of listed there is what do we think the wild implications for perils of paradise will be and then just kind of i think uh and, and i didn't put this part in the notes but how did we enjoy the and and, and what was our experience with the uh, theory crafting event itself um i kind of want to start with the wild implications of perils in paradise because i think that's honestly the more interesting thing for listeners. And the other part is the, like us getting to geek out about a cool experience that we had, which I totally still yeah. want to do, but, <laughs> but, <laughs> but let's, let, let's actually talk about the, uh, wild implications of the forthcoming set first, I think. Um, so, I'll let you kind of guide us through where where you want to to go first in the wild implications of perils in paradise. So I think my first kind of impressions on the set as a whole is um, Death Knight and DH are getting a lot of support and like aggressive support where they haven't gotten support in the past uh, in this set and in in a way at a power level that it might actually it might let them play in wild a little bit like oh my goodness you mean like death knight and dk get to have a relevant wild deck uh wow. mind wow. blown <laughs> um we did we did uh we did sneak off with, with uh flare hs a little bit and play a friendly or two uh or three or four i forget how many we played uh games in wild using wild decks using the new cards and um the first card that i think stood out to me and has looked strong across the theory crafting stream was horizon's edge like i think we we Love pointed it. it out we pointed it out before it started it's a little awkward to start because like you're you're throwing down a location that doesn't have any health or attack and you tap it for th for three damage and you're like ah, all right this is okay but like once you get tokens down and the tokens start dying and it just it gets you can have some unhinged turns where it's like well i already have minions on board and now like they're dying and i'm swinging board back and i'm trading and i'm swinging board especially like mining casualties this yeah looked, this looked really good i don't know what what, what were your thoughts on uh, horizon's edge absolutely so um first just to to kind of for our um audio listeners and, and people following along horizon's edge is the four mana location deal three damage randomly split among all enemies after a friendly minion dies reopen this and it has five uses so locations typically you know you play it you activate it, then you have to wait two turns. But like Schmoopy was saying, whenever a token dies, then you can activate it again and activate it again. And if you don't have any tokens on board initially, it's a four mana deal three damage randomly across. That's underwhelming. If you have tokens, this is a four mana deal 15 damage. That's a, that scales quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's nuts. And I think, uh, especially in wild, since we have even death Knight, where yeah. we have a one mana hero power, where we can immediately on turn five, we can drop this deal three, trade a token deal three. Again, that's enough to start swinging boards. Then we can play some other of the good cards, and that like uh, Ghoul's Night Out was another card we don't have listed here, but like a it was a Death Knight card, four mana, 
summon five ghouls. They randomly they attack random enemies. They're one ones. Um, mm-hmm. You don't obviously get to like reactivate Horizon's Edge every time one of those ghouls ends up um dying but at the same time like they can go face Mm -hmm. and also like unholy triple unholy death knight is always looking for ways to use corpses so that it's it's big finisher is online and like horizon's edge uh, ben from work submitted a a horizon's edge in in an unholy list and it just dovetailed beautifully with ghouls like it was like i don't know sheep like it felt it felt really strong to me those cards yeah. felt very much at home, very much bringing that deck together. And uh, one thing that I'd say that it will impact the wild meta too is not only just like the hero power and the fact that this goes with that, but that deck tends to do very well into pirate rogue. And mm. like both mm-hmm. Garot rogue and pirate rogue are very popular right now. And in, for very similar reasons, um, an unholy DK build that I think is still allowed to run plagues and also has like you know deal threes and rusher twos and cleans up pirate decks um you know i, I could see that get that deck seeing a lot of play and having some joy and like a tier three ish kind of level I-, I almost wonder if we end up cutting the um plague package in that for the more like tokeny you know the horizon's edge the um ghouls night out um obviously we can't run um the three mana one um crop rotation because we're going to be playing even um but some of those more tokeny cards um and kind of cutting the then um, probably the did then probably did yeah you, you could you could um but uh, but i'm just saying like there's that like regardless like the, the we've the got options it was like yeah and 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 traditionally that's been one of those decks that's kind of on the fringes that's just like well if you know it's going to be especially for thl right because we've we've mm-hmm. talked thl before and i know you've played the deck more than i have um like if you suspect a board-based matchup where people are going to bring board-based decks it's always a sleeper bring because it does very well in those matchups. It's other matchups that you're like, ah, I don't know if this is going to go so well. <laughs> so true. And and we really did get a couple of cards for that archetype here. Um, another one that we got that we're not dedicating um, time to here. And and this one wouldn't be for uh, Triple Unholy, but um, Eliza Goreblade felt really good sure. in in the Warlock deck that that we played in particular. Um, weird card, weird, really card. weird card. Strong <laughs> effect, weird card. I'm interested to see how we end up using it in Wild. Uh, uh, there has to be something there. Like I, we never death growled it. Like we never went like full on like nutty weird let's let's activate this a couple times but um and the runes are weird like it almost it has to be rainbow nobody's playing yeah. like double blood frost or double frost blood dk like that's just not no. a deck so um but we did get another couple of for the unholy in particular if we're running a, a more um death rattle package i don't know that that's there yet but it's something to kind of keep our eyes on for the future uh, Brittlebone Buccaneer is a two mana yeah, one four point. undead pirate. Whenever you play a death rattle minion, give it reborn. Yeah. Phenomenal. Uh, and similar to that is that, um, so Brittlebone Buccaneer had one uh, unholy rune. This next one, Dreadhound Handler, has no rune requirement. Awesome card. Yeah. yeah. Two mana two two undead pirate rush, death rattle, summon a one one Dreadhound with reborn. So it's just super sticky. Fantastic. Yeah. Two mana, three corpses. Fantastic. And the fact that it's two mana and rush, uh, it, it, it could absolutely see, see play right away. Yep. So just just more fodder for that deck, be it in, in this particular iteration or like you said, Schmoopy, just always on the peripheral. We've got more options and, and more kind of ways to build from it um, to subsequent uh, releases. Um, so... Death Knight got got some tools. Demon Hunter did as well with Patches. Patches of uh, the Pilot is a one mana one one demon pirate. Sounds familiar. Um, you know, the, this one is Demon Hunter specific with the battle cry. 
Shuffle six parachutes into your deck that summon a 1-1 pirate with charge when drawn. So, of course, these are cast when drawn, so they are spells, but as soon as you, you draw them, then you, you know, draw your subsequent card from your deck as well. So uh, the subsequent patches, or, or parachutes rather, create falling Illidari, which are only pirates, not, not pirate demons, with charge. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah, and they'll trigger cannons. Like they like we didn't get to do that uh for the theorycraft stream, but I uh, just watching the sort of aggressive pirate decks that standard was running, I think what's going to happen is is we're going to have some bad DH pirate decks come out first by mm -hmm. wild players and then standard's going to make a good uh dh pirate deck and right around the time wild players start stealing stuff from standard like we, we, we like you know hone in on corvette watch corvette do it take the best parts of what they're doing in standard and then port it to wild uh it probably gets nerfed but like patches is like the straw that stirs the drink that's the whole reason why you would consider doing any of that and in fact i think patches i think i've said i think it's a good enough card you run it in basically every DH deck, including Reno uh -huh. DH deck. I, I, I Reno DH deck, you seriously consider it because half of your car, your Highlander cards don't even care if you shuffle in dupes anymore. Uh, and we mm -hmm. saw that. I, we played against somebody who was running a Highlander uh, Demon Hunter deck, and they were running patches, and it was just like, oh, yeah, Reno still works. Oh, yeah, this uh, Kurtra still works. Oh, yeah. Like and again, mm -hmm. so like I I think that's a I think it's a solid card, and I think it might even breed some archetypes in uh, in wild. We might see a, a pirate demon hunter. But even the the quest line, like all of these parachutes, mm -hmm. count for two draws whenever you play those. So quest line, you know, probably doesn't hate it either. I don't know if it's as core there, but. I think we pretty much just run patches in almost any Demon Hunter deck going forward. It's just that I'd, good. I know I'd run it in Questline. It is a debate because yeah. the parachutes are going to eat discounts. And it's always mm -hmm. like a big, like I was talking with somebody like KVLT, who basically is like the king of that archetype. He's just like, I don't know. Like traditionally, I haven't run stuff like Soul Shards because they eat the discounts and you don't like that. But Soul Shard's impact on the board is so minor versus one of the weaknesses of that deck um, tends to be like Swarmy Aggro. Like Swarmy Aggro or Shadow Priest just gets you down before you can get there. And Patches, I know they say charge, but okay, sheep, close your ears for a second. You can use them as rushers. Like you can, in fact, trade with the with the pirates as they come out. And, and that's more discounts for playhouse giants and brutes and stuff and so and it's great when like hey let's let's keep them in deck and now let's do some let's do some funny gaslight gatekeeper plays like I, there's 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 a lot of synergy there i think it's worth trying absolutely um questline demon hunter has never been uh one of those decks that i've sat with for quite a while so i know that there's discussion back and forth I don't know where I land on it, um, but I do know that I really like patches. So that's why I was like, I don't know that it's core to the deck, but <laughs> it's a discussion still. Yeah, a hundred percent. Well, we've also got King Tide. So King Tide yeah. is a mage minion, uh, four mana, four, four, no, no minion type. Uh, battle cry both players spells cost five until the end of your next turn so king tide is both big spell support and a lotheb combined into one uh even if we're not doing big spell things we we can lock our opponent out of playing a big spell playing as like if they want to play a spell, they pretty much have to use their entire next turn unless we're just like drawing terribly and playing it on 10, in which case they're having to use half of their next turn <laughs> playing one single spell. So King Tide seems both a great proactive tool for doing things like 
LPG, um, which I know Schmoopy is one thing that, that I was talking about uh, earlier. Yeah, um, 100%. So proactive for that or what standards trying to kind of push with the um, big spell thing. But also a um, not really reactive, but disruptive tool um, on against your opponent as well. So the, the King Tide being able to both be proactive and disruptive is just kind of the best of both worlds. It's a really good card, and it's four mana. It's a four mana four four. It's like a better okay, if you take off the tradable from Speaker Stomper, which allows you to get rid of Speaker Stomper when you don't want it, right? Like it's just like a. If you put that in Reno Priest, you'd be super happy about it, right? Like if you had a four mana four four, your spells cost five the next turn. Like you'd you'd run mm -hmm. that, and I think it's good enough to run in wild and slow mage decks have looked good um i i've had mm -hmm. several i've had i keep posting videos i know on my personal channel of just like more war crimes with ping mage i promise this is the last video i'm going to post about ping mage um it won't but be. like it won't be hero power mage looks really strong there are some cards in the list that i think are lackluster that are not good um you play spells tactically in that deck and you're not always happy about like what spells you have or have left to play. Um, so there's some turns where you're just playing minions just to play minions for the sake of playing minions. I would not hate chaining this thing with a potion. Like I, I wouldn't. It's, it's, it's a Lotheb for four mana and it's a four, four. Uh, like that sounds great. Like you play that you might, if secret mage was still a thing, you'd consider running this in secret mage. I don't know if you can get around the five man attacks. If you do something like, um, what is it? Uh, the make your next secret cause zero. I think that would bypass it, I believe, but it's like switched I'm, back and forth I'm so imagine. many times and it's switched back and forth so many times in coding. I have a tough time figuring out which it's going to be, but like I, you'd play it in secret mage. Like you'd probably play it in an aggro mage because it's that disruptive. Um, you'd play it in wild because uh, going into turn five, the miracle rogue can't do anything. <laughs> you basically mm -hmm. time walk the miracle rogue. So like, and miracle rogue's one of the best decks in wild right now. I think you absolutely, this will see play. And it's, it's uh, like we we're seeing in chat. It is an amazing diamond animation. It's solid. So I, I think this is a slam dunk of a card. And if LPG, like, I, 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 we got to check on the LPG mains. They might be overdosing from Copium. I, I have to really make sure that they're okay. Because, like, you, they <laughs> might really get their hopes up on how good this card is. Because it, it, it's a really good card. You could play your, you could play LPG on five. The last time LPG was, like, playable. Bastado. You could play it on five. Bring it back. Bring it back. Um, <laughs> let's see. I, I think I, I think it's absolutely going to have an impact on the wild meta. Now, one thing I am going to do with King Tide that probably won't have an impact on the wild meta is I'm going to play Spiteful Summoner Mage. Again, <laughs> that's not going to be a good deck. I'm going to no. play it. I'm going to play uh, it. Okay. I, I don't care about my rank. Why <laughs> Why would I not play it? <laughs> if you're playing it, I'm going to end up playing it. You're going to send it my way. <laughs> I just know it. I just know it. Yes, you are correct. <laughs> I just know it. Uh, now I see why you were groaning. <laughs> uh, uh, well, next on the docket is Mixologist. Mixologist yeah. is a three mana, two, three minion. Neutral. With a battle cry. Craft a custom one cost potion. And that one cost potion is um, the Kazakus potion. The exact same discover options there yep. that you get to do. So you get to choose two of them. You don't get to decide which um, mana cost it is. It's always a one cost potion. Three mana, two, three. Discover that one cost Kazakus potion. Tell me a little bit more about Mixologist. Sure. I. I Toward the end of the lifespan of Kazakus in Wild, where we were seeing him as a constant entry um, into lists, uh, we were pretty much always just playing him for the one mana potion. Play him for the one mana potion, mm -hmm. play him for the one mana potion. In fact, the, the last list I think I saw him seriously played was in a, a Hijo-style 
Um, not Shadow Priest because uh, Hijo absolutely hated. Uh, oh God, what was the spell aura that is holy? That priest gets that that discounts your first spell every turn. Um, it was in Festival of Legends. Yes, I can't remember what it's called, but yeah, it, it has the effect. And if you don't play a spell in one turn, then it goes away. But as long as you play at least one yes. spell in a turn, love everlasting, love everlasting. That or, there it is, there it is, love everlasting. And and Hijo absolutely hated that card, but he thought it was busted. And so like with love everlasting up. You could get away with playing Kazakus because you could play Kazakus on turn four and then immediately play the one cost potion that he produced. And mm -hmm. so where do we find ourselves moving on in the wild meta? Uh, Kazakus is way too slow. You're, you don't see him anywhere near any meta lists now. Nobody even pretends that you can play him. Mixologist is one mana cheaper. In theory, you could run two of it. And it's giving those same great odds for a complete anti-aggro potion of deal mm -hmm. three to AOE. Um, felt strong in the playthrough. Mm -hmm. it, it, it looked great on turn three. Turn four, you could play the potion, play another three drop. Like I, I thought this card performed pretty well, and I saw it absolutely everywhere. And also, you can pair it with Sonya and do war crimes with that. And um, like in, in Rogue, I just I think it's just like a really good card. And I think it's going to be one of those cards you see sneak its way into renal piles everywhere because it's a great neutral. It's just a great neutral and it's good anti-aggro, which is what you're really looking for if you're making a reno deck. Yeah. And, you know, the, the stats, while it is undercosted, the idea is or understated rather, um, the idea is you get to play to turn earlier than Kazakus. That's a more impactful thing in, in my opinion. Um, it has the same health total as Kazakus. Yes, one attack less, but but it's a three drop, not a four drop. You're getting it out earlier, so you have answers earlier. It speeds the game up quite a bit. Um, and honestly, whenever I'm trying to do the um, Reno pile of Priest, what I'm doing is typically just trying to get a whole lot of cheap spells so that I can do a Raza pop off whenever I can do that thing. If we're doing it um, with uh, Shadow, obviously we're not playing Love Everlasting in that case, but <laughs> uh, this gives us another cheap spell, another cheap, cheaper minion than Kazakus even. Same effect. If we really wanted to, we could run Mixologist and Kazakus. Like Shmoopy was saying, we're, we're probably just have already cut Kazakus regardless. Mixologist lets us have that same effect, but earlier. So absolutely great anti-aggro tool. We can discover it, the effect, just like the Kazakus potion of old. So it lets us kind of build a reaction, uh, build, build a, um, not reaction, the... Um, uh, a response and build a, a way to both respond to the board or be more proactive if that's what the situation calls for. So mixologist, fantastic card. Absolutely. We're going to see it. I, I do believe as well. Well, one card that was all over the theory crafting stream was concierge. So Concierge is a 3-mana three 3-4 three, pirate, neutral, that reads, Your cards from another class cost one less. Now, Shmoopy, why were we seeing so much Concierge throughout this theory crafting stream? Because <laughs> it's basically 3-mana Sorcerer's Apprentice for... For for one mana drinks, um, but like <laughs> you know, it, it, with the tourist with the tourist mechanic, the devs I think saw fit to have some way to ease the burden of okay, you're playing you're playing tourist, you're playing cards outside of their you know outside of their intended class, and the costs and the curves don't always match up, and so concierge is supposed to ease that, and boy does she do that. 
Um, <laughs> if you're if you're playing a tourist and you get concierge down, uh, she feels pretty busted. I've already seen Copper Scum come up with a an APM style waker mage using concierge instead of sorcerer's apprentice. And using the new paladin, to, uh, the the mage mm. tourist to get access to paladin, which has like sunscreens and like really cheap one mana spells, and so like concierge is just like Sork 2.0, but you know she's a little bit she's a little bit stockier, she's a little bit harder to remove, and uh, and she's a neutral. And I, I, there's a lot of discussion online already surrounding this, as far as like. You know, you see the usual grumpy gro- goers being like, "This needs to get nerfed immediately." <laughs> um, this card is too good, uh, and I do think you're going to see it. I think, I think as uh, you are going to see it. Uh, you know, there's an OTK dru- druid list that was all centered around the discounts and basically playing mm-hmm. cards for free, and concierge is at the center of that. Um, she she probably she probably takes a hit at some point. It would not shock me to see people try similar shenanigans in wild in place of Sorcerer's Apprentice. But in other classes, uh, like, I don't know, let's say we're playing, um, what deck do we used to play? I don't know. Like, like maybe we're trying to do some sort of itis OTK and we're mm-hmm. using, we're using like, um, I don't know sunscreens on itis for free. Like I just I, concierge is going to pop up as a as a mana cheat um, because it doesn't say less than one. So like yeah, she'll play stuff for free. Anytime mana cheat is involved, yes, standard find, finds a way to kind of break stuff. Wild finds a way to capitalize on it even more. So it does not surprise me at all that Copper in particular um, has been like, oh, let's apply this to the Flame Waker OTK because that makes complete sense. Um, we could maybe see, um, oh gosh, I'm, I'm sure that, that uh, someone like Raxius will, will find a way to combo uh, Concierge into uh, some sort of like a, a Druid um, Tog OTK type situation. Um, like she did for um, the current Tog. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that might look like. Maybe the, the density of cards that Druid will have from other classes isn't there for that kind of a thing. But there are yeah. so many different ways that we can capitalize on the here's some mana cheat. We can make just busted things happen. <laughs> and she's also going to be fun. Like I, we could also play like a really bad thief rogue, and yeah. she's going to ease. And she's a pirate. She's going to ease the burden on a lot of like your kind of rougher hits off of shell game and or some of the older thief cards that you're using. So like yeah, you know, or pack. So like I, I, yeah, I, just good card pulls patches. Bastado. Uh, you're gonna see more of her are you just trying to give people ideas to send <laughs> to you to play on on I the release so. day i guess so I, well, that's <laughs> a, okay okay but here's the thing about this expansion here's the thing about this expansion i think this expansion is going to be a lot of fun uh, people are really going into this expansion people are really down on this expansion this is going to be such a deck builder's paradise. There's so there's going to be so many more options as far as like what's available for you to try, new tools to play with, new combinations. Mm-hmm. Even if it's only limited to like one class, one set, I don't care. Like it, it, it's going to give you the option to do some really weird, messed up stuff. A lot of it's going to be bad, but some of it's going to be really cool. And I can't wait to see the application of it. And I, I think a lot of the standalone neutrals look really strong and and like they can stand on their own and they're good at arena. I, 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 I like, yeah, there, I'm going to get some bad ideas. I'm also going to get some really cool ideas and some really cool stuff that comes from it. I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. I think it's going to be neat. Big agree. Um, uh, as an aside, uh, Gosh, I guess it was this Monday. Um, so this is before the theory crafting stream. Um, 
on Squelch, Daniel and I were talking and we were like, oh, wh- wh- what do we think the power level is going to be? You know, just kind of looking at the cards and we were thinking like, you know, maybe kind of mid tier to like low, like kind of in, in that that kind of part of the spectrum and then playing with the cards. No, the, these are <laughs> strong cards. They're just not yeah. like force feeding us archetypes are just like, here's a strong card. Here's a strong card. They're, you know, some of those packages, like the big spell mage that I was talking about earlier, but their packages are not like you have to do this King tide. Like I was talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Enables, um, you know, the big spell archetype. It's also disruption. It's also just a card that you can just play in, in a Reno mage and be like super happy about it. Even if you're not using a spell, on your turn to kind of take advantage of it. Um, I'm, I was very surprised when actually feeling the the play pattern of the cards and, and of the decks, how much stronger everything felt than, than it looked just evaluating the cards and even like trying to build the decks. Yeah, I think individually they're not all that impressive, but it's like mostly like the greater overlapping synergies when you actually see them all laid out and, and working together. I think really comes to the fore, especially like for me, uh, when we were playing that, that Warlock Death Rattle deck, the, the Warlock Tourist. Holy cow, that card is yeah. really good. That card looked like Eh, it looked okay. Like I thought maybe like for wild, like, you know, some application in like mine rogue or something like, or like a mine, uh, mine warlock or, or something along those lines. But then like playing with it, like on its own, holy cow, like that, that thing was busted (laughs) if you could get it to stick. And so like, that's, that's like the whole set feels like that. Like there's, there's a lot of really like heavy hitting cards. Whenever I was building that deck, um, before we, you know, had a chance to actually play with everything, I, I called it Death Rattle question mark. Because I was like, you know, I'm just throwing stuff together. Like, I don't think this is any good, but like, oh, it'll be good enough. Like, we can iterate on it and see what like feels good and what doesn't. Like some of the stuff that I just threw in because, well, it's a death rattle, what may as well, like like Nomalia and um, Crowd Surfer. <laughs> Crowd surfer, um, you absolute the, the lunatic, not realizing it could be, not realizing crowd surfer could buff their stuff too. But I mean, we were always <laughs> yeah. ahead on board; it didn't matter. Uh, but yeah. yeah, no, that was that was hysterical. That was <laughs> that was a good that was a good deck. <laughs> that deck was so much fun. Uh, that no hands gamer asked us for the list. That that was like a, a personal <laughs> point of pride. My like just kind of s- slapping cards together and no hands is like oh we did it <laughs> <laughs> like cool <laughs> we drooled our way there chat we did it <laughs> <laughs> well the last card that we wanted to to highlight is tide pool pupil and and schmoopy men- you mentioned this uh er- earlier kind of in passing um but uh so tide pool pupil is a one mana two one naga it's a neutral so this can go into any class. The battle cry, if you've cast three spells while holding this, discover one of them. So this works like uh, Commander Zavara did. So it's only the first three spells that you cast while you're holding her, um, holding the tide pool pupil in, in this case, uh, that you get to choose from. That's not a bad thing. That's just a mechanical. That's that's what, what the scope is. Um Commander Zavara, we we play in Quest Mage for sure. Um, I mean, Ping Mage, we we play her there too, right? Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, she's not as good in Ping Mage. Ping Mage is weird because Ping Mage is has this problem where, oh my gosh, I need draw. Oh my gosh, I don't need draw. My hand is too fu- is too full, and so like you're constantly stuck between these two kind of issues where it's just like, okay. No, I need more cards. No, 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 I don't need any more cards. So Savara is always kind of an awkward fit because right around the time that you're done needing cards, Savara's like clogging your hand and you're and you're mad. Um This card though it fixes that issue. <laughs> this card though, well, I mean, it's not as good as Savara if you want all three spells, but let's say right. you want to target a specific spell. Um the combo specifically that I know of in rogue which i think may get tide pool pupil banned 
itself <laughs> in Wild is uh, cur- courtesy of Raxius. Thank you, Raxius, for pointing this out for me because, again, I am dense. Um, mailbox Bran, Step the Mailbox Dancer, Mailbox Coin Coin Tide Pool, Take Two Shadow Steps, Step the Tide Pool, Step the Mailbox, Mailbox Coin Coin Tide Pool. <laughs> You see where this is going. <laughs> um, you basically get infinite mana for the combination, and you can keep repeating it, keep repeating it, keep repeating it, keep repeating it. Um, and uh, and that's a problem because that's that's infinite mana. And so, what do you do with that infinite mana? Well, right now, what Wild has come up with is like, well, we'll, we'll play Draka and get a gigantic Draka weapon and slap you in the face with it. As early as turn two, as ter- er, sorry, as early as turn four, as early as turn four, um, I've seen Maxi Bond, who is a known war criminal, say that this <laughs> is uh, this is pretty consistent. This looks pretty solid. Um, another way you could look at this card is uh, infinite ice blocks. Um, like once again, you're just sort of like you know, oh, get another ice block potion do some stuff get another ice block um i'm less worried about that i'm more worried about the rogue combo because i think the rogue combo is going to probably be an actual real wild deck even if it's not tier one it's going to be a pretty warping if it's a fast combo deck and it's faster than aggro it's going to be a pretty warping tier two deck which nobody wants. Nobody. Well, I mean, some people want that, but like whatever. <laughs> um, but that's that's going to be, I think, a bigger problem than any kind of hostage mage or something like that. If we're playing mage, we have other ways to do that. We've got hostage mage. Let's go in the chat. Yeah, we have other norm, known war criminals in chat as we're as we're speaking. But I'm more worried <laughs> about the combo mage personally. Or uh, combo rogue. Excuse me. Well, and tide pool pupil is a one drop. So we can include this in like any odd deck. Mm-hmm. None of those kind of come to mind as, as particular um, outliers right now. But hey, if we've got an odd paladin that we we end up being able to put together, we've we've got the um, uh, that one holy spell that that upgrades with with your mana. It, oh, um, this being conviction. neutral. Yeah, yeah, conviction. This being neutral will allow us to put it into just about any deck that that it it fits. Um, now the <laughs> the Draka OTK um, potential is totally there. This can also just be like not quite a tempo card, right? Because you're not tempoing out a one mana two one probably, but like value cheap you can weave it in easily it's gonna be like a a swiss army knife um we're gonna want an extra one of whatever other cards we put into our deck that's just good over savara if you don't care about getting all three of your spells back if you're really just like want to just do a one mana rewind but this has to be in your hand for all three spells like you might just play it. I mean, I, it, mm-hmm. Raza, Raza Priest might play it. They don't quite play enough spells to make use of it, but it's one mana, and so it's like it's ping fuel. So you, you I think you sniff it, you think about it. Um, there's going to be applications for it in Wild outside of just like a rogue OTK, but just like that, that in and of itself might make it obnoxious enough that like this is my. This is my odds on favorite to get banned in wild first and foremost for the set and we don't see her for a while, we'll see. <laughs> what other card do you think or cards do you think have you know, not quite as good odds as Tidepool Pupil, but kind of tangential odds to see a wild ban? Oh, I don't know if anything like it's so hard because I don't Spurgs end up putting out something in, in Martian discord. He goes, let's do a death pool for cards for the new set. And then he picked one. And like, 
I think when it comes to any of these nerfs or things, um, it has to be for standard reasons. I think a lot of the cards we discussed tonight are probably going to get touched at some point or another for standard reasons. Whether it's this expansion, whether it's early next expansion, so that this expansion doesn't over outshine the new cards coming out for the new expansion. That's going to be um, that's going to be the main the main issue here uh whatever fun or messed up things we're doing in wild i think are going to be tangential to that conversation so to make it more wild centric um is kind of what, what i'm thinking of with the ban aspect so obviously tide pool pupil is the odds on favorite to pull the wild ban for me a hundred percent yeah because like i guess fast combo that is yeah. outpacing aggro that like you can disrupt it, but like some decks are just not going to have a way to play around it. Shmoopy, it loses to a single taunt. Shut up, chat. Like I just think there's going to be like <laughs> it loses to target dummy. Shut up, chat. Um, I mean, it's a Draka weapon. Like it's going to be, it's going to have three charges. Um, I, I think that might be. That's also an animation cheat deck, which is like mm -hmm. another like bing 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 bing. Like you see like like bright flashing lights whenever there's like a wild animation sheet deck the devs step in right away to nip it in the bud whether it's good or not doesn't really matter it's not something they want to deal with they don't want to deal with um another holy crab situation where somebody was blatantly um you know cheating on ladder animation wise and seeing results um so i i, I think it's like more likely than not you see tide pool hit and wild. I'm going to say I'll, I'll put myself in the right. I'll put myself out there. I'm going to say tide pool is going to get itself banned. I'm surprised I, I, I did not have it on the list initially. I think tide pool is going to get itself banned before we see all three sets rotate for this sort of reason, unless there's some sort of change to the card text that means that it's going to be fine. But. So by, by that same token, do you think that, Lower odds, but you know, still potential. A uh, concierge may see a wild ban, for example, for like Flame Waker OTK. You know, like, like you said, warning warning signs go off whenever you you see the possibility for an animation cheat deck, and Flame Waker with a whole lot of cheap spells could potentially get there. I don't know that you actually need animation cheats to do that thing if you're pulling off that combo, but. Aside from Tide Pool Hunter, is there anything else that you think might possibly, again, lower odds than Tide Pool Hunter, sniff at a wild a wild ban at some point? Concierge, I think, is like probably the next closest, just with the mana cheat involved. Mm -hmm. I still think at three mana, and the fact that it has to be cards outside of your class, mm -hmm. is going to save it. I think as far as mm -hmm. like make it something that it's a problem in wild. I'm not saying it's not going to be part of a competitive deck. I think right. standard is already like the, the, the whinging has started. They've got the card in their sights. The target is acquired. The army is assembled. Concierge is going down. It's on borrowed time, folks. I'm sorry. Like if you are having fun with the card, it's not going to be as it was. Um, I, I, I think that card's going to get nerfed. I don't think it's going to require a ban. And, but if let's say it wasn't going to be nerfed. Do I think we require a ban for wild? I still don't think so because I think the mm -hmm. fact that it has to be a class that's not yours is a limiting enough factor that everything's going to be okay. It's um, not quest mage style where things like that you like every just spell. generate from like e a vocation or anything like that. You know, I'm saying it's a three mana sorcerer's apprentice, but it's really not because it's it's right. limited to cards not from your class. So you're you're stuck kind of you're stuck kind of figuring out okay how best can I can I mess with this? And right now it looks like the best package is in druid using the mage mm -hmm. drinks, making them free, giving them some spell damage, and slinging them at your opponent and hoping it's enough to kill them, which we tried that deck, and um, <laughs> the deck seems okay. Like, I don't know. People who are good at it are going to be really good at it, but it doesn't seem like an easy deck. So, like, I'm sure it'll get nerfed at some point because good players will spam it. But, um, eh. Uh, 
Eh. No, I think I think that's mostly it. I think I think the little tide pool boy is going to be the, the the big problem. Excellent. Well, switching gears a little bit, um, I feel like the the theory craft highlights that I touched on were probably the the biggest highlights that that I you know had being asked for for deck codes from from people who who I respect. That was pretty cool. Um, are there any other kind of highlights that you'd want to touch on from the theory craft before we kind of pivot over to some unrelated advice? No, I mean, I think, I think the two cards that we saw the most or the, the two decks that really made the biggest splash that I saw were like the adaptive amalgam in some form of like kingsbane amalgam like like just like getting a bunch of buffs on it giving it rush giving it cleave giving it trample or whatever keyword we have for it or don't have for it where it deals excess damage to the hero uh -huh. after it makes contact with a minion like i just like making stupid gigantic adaptive amalgams and then going face that was very popular that looked kind of fun um <laughs> Uh, I, I did want to kind of touch on adaptive amalgam too because I'm yeah I, I really want to play that in uh, aggro druid. This is going to be one of those those decks and cards that I'm pretty much the only one who's who's doing this thing. It does pull um, patches? It pulls patches. Um, <laughs> right now, the way that I I have it built is I've got um, voracious reader as like the the big draw. Sure. Um, I'm probably going to cut the reader and put composting in. I'm probably going to cut um, the two mana beast, the two, three, that basically gives everything one attack just for that turn. Just make those two changes. But what I'm throwing in for that one is obviously adaptive amalgam. So then the, uh, the one mana one, one that draws a beast is either drawing um, adaptive amalgam or your one mana one, three amalgam. Pull patches, and then just go. And then whenever things get buffed with either embiggen or on the board, which we love to do, or with composting, all of a sudden it's just like this. These minions that this deck tends to kind of deck out pretty easily. Well, I'm gonna have this card that is drawing cards. Maybe I don't want want it to do that before too long, but um, right, drawing right. cards. It's bigger than than it should be for the cost anyway. Is it gonna be good? No. Am I gonna have a lot of fun doing it? Did you, yeah. <laughs> if you can't I mean, tell, it, yeah. <laughs> it looks like a fine minion. Like people are building around it. That looks good. Um, that and people are making a lot of noise about the. Again, this like spell damage, mage drink, OTK type deck. Um, I have to see it in more practice hands. We gave it a try at it, and it it was a little rough. Um, I I think somebody Th that may have been bit, kind of my fault, though. Truthfully, uh, somebody with a little bit, somebody with a little bit more, somebody with a little bit more reps to it. I, I'd never seen the deck, so I was trying to do it blind. I mean, I was helping you, so like, I, it, it's my fault too. Um, you know, <laughs> wild players rubbing their rubbing their two neurons together trying to get this thing to work. I mean, I, I did see some clips of some people like nuking somebody with a full board from twenty. So like, whoa. Um, the, 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 the glass cannon aspect is possibly there. Is it more than a glass mm. cannon? Like, will it, will it break at the first sign of, of pressure or is it, does it have more staying power? I think requires some more data and a mm -hmm. bigger than just a theory crafting event. Like the power levels there, like the deck can definitely win, but like, can it win consistently? Eh, I have my, I have my, I have my doubts. We'll see. Unrelated advice with Schmoopy Daddy. Well, Schmoopy, it is coming to be uh, summertime. You're on summer vacation. You're you're living it up. Um, right now, the lamb is is currently in daycare, so summer do doesn't really affect us too much right now, but. He won't be in daycare forever. Um, I know that you and, and Schmoopy Mommy have 
uh, kind of like a, a system going on with your kiddos, but what would you recommend are kind of some, some options to, uh, for those of us, like my wife and I, who, you know, we don't get summers off. Um, what, what do you do with kids to make sure that they're like taken care of and like have fun and actually get to be kids before they're old enough to kind of like stay around the house by themselves, which in Colorado, you have to be 12 before you can legally, or your kids have to be 12 before you can legally leave them at home. So eh, he's got a little while before he's 12. <laughs> sure. Uh, the, the, the shortest, most direct option is to just send them away. Uh, camp is great. <laughs> camp is great. Get them out of the house, get them away, get them away from you as much distance as possible. Honestly, uh, is, is usually the best. Because you are usually the corrupting factor. You, you spend the most time with them. Uh, you have the most influence on them. And so if anything goes uh, the wrong way, it's usually on you. So if you can take that aspect and remove yourself from it uh, and just send that locus of control someplace else, uh, yeah, that's, 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 that's the benefit. We have Schmoopy in, uh, in, in martial arts camp right now. Uh, yes, we're weaponizing him. Uh, is it a good idea? <laughs> we don't know. Uh, but like, you know, that's a thing we're doing and, uh, he's having a lot of fun right now. And, uh, and, and, and yeah, he's, 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 he's very active. We're basically, we're basically doing a lot of like, now that he's old enough to kind of go to camp and we're sure he's not going to burn the place down. Um, he's having a lot of fun and he's hanging out all day and he's, he's just one of the dudes, uh, not, not the, you know, resident terrorist in chief. Uh, and so, and so he's, he's having a good time and, uh, when the little one is a little bit bigger, we'll probably do the same thing with her just to make sure that she's active and she's running around. Cause right now she really likes the couch and bluey. So that's like that's like the next great challenge because once again we're the corrupting influence there. We also like the couch in Bluey. Um, get her as far away from us as possible, and maybe she's got a shot. Wiser words have never been spoken, and you heard that on. Bore to be wild. Schmoopy is developing a particular set of skills. 